SBC Media. Welcome to iGaming Daily, analysing the news from the betting and gaming industry all over the globe, supported by the Casino Beat Summit, bringing you the future of play, iGaming strategy, innovation and development. Be a part of the future of play at the Casino Beat Summit this May. See new game releases, take in our innovation-focused conference agenda and network with the casino industry elite. Get your tickets now at sbcevents.com. Team SBC returns from the positive vibes of the North American iGaming space to the market realities and regulatory transition of mature Western European markets. Alongside the UK government publishing its long overdue white paper, 2023's first quarter saw further legislative reforms announced in the markets of Spain, France, Sweden, Belgium, Italy and the Netherlands. So what are the takeaways from West Europe's never-ending transition of markets and where are individual regulators trying to take their respective markets? These are the answers we'll seek as iGaming Daily gets the editorial lowdown. Joining me, your host, James Ross, in today's episode will be Ted Menwitt, the content director at SBC. And returning for two days in a row is Ted Omclay, the senior journalist at SBC News. How are you both doing today? Uh, fantastic. Uh, ready to talk about some regulations with you, James. Perfect. And OC, are you ready for some regulations? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Thanks, James. Uh, glad to be back here for a second time, as you mentioned, and yeah, ready to uh, talk about regulatory goings on. Perfect. But before we actually delve into this, we do this every time you two are on the podcast together. <laughs> we need a way for the listeners and mainly myself to distinguish who's who out of the Teds. So I think because Ted Minway, you have the senior status. Thank you. For this episode, you are known as Alpha Ted, and Ted, I'm clear, you will be Beta Ted, and that's how we're going to refer to you today. So for the audience, I'll say Alpha Ted, and that'll be Ted, if you just want to speak. Hello. (laughs) I want to put this to referendum. This is Alpha Ted, and (laughs) there'll be no referendum in this podcast. It's a dictatorship. So that's the voice of Alpha Ted, and the voice of Beta Ted is? Yeah, I guess that's me for today, then. There's my Beta. Perfect. So let's dive into this and we'll go with the first question, Alpha Ted. Mm -hmm. What are the binding narratives of Western Europe's regulatory adjustment? You know, following Q1, I mean, what what is evidently clear is that gambling's regulatory transition is happening at a time where the governments of nations are having concerns of cost of living and affordability. And towards the industry itself, There's concerns about problem gambling, advertising conduct, and the relationship between the industry and its consumers and the industry and its regulatory powers. And these are kind of, you know, huge issues and huge factors that are taking, that need to be addressed at at a time of conflict for within multiple markets. Mm -hmm. And Beta Ted, anything to add to that? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, cost of living and affordability is the overriding one. If you look back, I think a lot of this stems from COVID when, you know, a lot of the land based sectors closed, people started betting online more. And I think that's where a lot of public, political, and regulatory concerns started arising. And then a lot of this connects with, you know, regulators looking at how can the industry better up- update its practices to ensure that affordability and cost of living are dealt with in the industry, I guess. Um, And some of it, a quite big overriding theme we've seen throughout Europe is uh, relating to advertising and marketing, uh, as you've said, said, uh, relating to like industry conduct on these areas. Mm -hmm. And another thing that Alpha Ted mentioned earlier is affordability. So in the UK, affordability has been cited as the unknown element of the review. So, Alpha, we'll come to you. How are other markets dealing with this dynamic? Yeah, I mean, across other markets, you can say that it is, again, kind of an an, an unknown element. Now, if you were to take Germany last year, kind of imposed uh, uh, €1,000 
monthly loss limit on casinos. That was followed up by Belgium, who placed the 500 per month loss limit on online casino. Uh, then if you go to Sweden, Sweden is yet undecided on whether it will impose limits and it's awaiting impetus from a new government. And there's even debate around this in, in Ireland's upcoming uh, launch of, of uh, an online gaming framework. Uh, finally, too, that I'd add that the market to watch is Spain, in which they're really going to be you know, the canary down the coal mine in how they impose uh, oh, saying. <laughs> how they impose <laughs> affordability checks. Uh, they're going to be very stringent. Uh, they're going to require operators in the first, I think it's first 300 euros that are spent on every player to carry out an affordability check. Also, I think it's even a lower limit on players under the age of 25. Uh, and again, with affordability checks, it, it's you're trying to see how operators adjust to it, to this high scrutiny, but also the the balance of costs, if they can kind of unify any any way that any way to kind of unify their operations. So there's a lot of uh, moving plates around on on the subject matter. Yeah, the, so the concerns around affordability and cost of living among regulators and among politicians across Europe are quite so standard and consistent. As Ted's pointed out, what isn't consistent is what measures and what policies have actually ultimately decided on. Obviously, we've seen quite a big difference between UK, Germany and Belgium, and there's been somewhat of a backlash, some of criticism of the respective policies in each country. And then Sweden is still hinging on, I believe it's on political developments and the result of an election uh, and the new government coming in. And Ireland, yeah, they've they've decided on some aspects of their new reform, like setting up a new regulator and a social, um, what was it, like a social impact fund. But affordability for them is still a big grey area. So, Beta Ted, we're gonna we're gonna stay with you here. Um, it appears from what you what you've both been talking about that the markets are, in a sense, being rebalanced. But where are the regulators trying to take us to? If we just look at the UK as an example, one of the big um, talking points that has been mentioned a lot over the past two, three, four years has been this need to bring gambling regulation into the digital age. Obviously, there's been a huge upsurge in on ga- online gambling and its sort of its presence, its visibility, the technology behind it over the past 10, 15 years. And I think a lot of regulators feel that the, a, the legislation and regulations around it need to be updated. I think that's quite a big thing. Um, adv- again, I mentioned advertising earlier. I think a lot of place, a lot of a lot of countries are looking at uh, how can I phrase this? Well, reforming reforming advertising, and there's a lot of concern about the visibility of gambling for vulnerable and younger people. I've seen that talked about a lot in the UK, but I think probably one of the biggest examples of that would be in the Netherlands and Belgium, where there's been um, yeah a, a, a political clampdown, you could say, on marketing and advertising to an extent. You know, with bans coming in on sports sponsorship, on the use of prominent sports people in advertising material so yeah there's a couple there's a couple of different areas they're trying to take the regulators are trying to take the industry but i think the big one is addressing the increase in online gambling and um visibility and it the subsequent perceived societal impact of that mm-hmm. when you said i'm gonna how to rephrase this i thought you were gonna give us your own version of alpha ted's canary down a coal mine version so i'm pretty <laughs> glad we didn't get that well, Alpha Ted, have you got anything to add to that? Yeah, I would. I mean, look, everything points towards high scrutiny of the industry, also tougher compliance. Um, in a lot of markets, the regulators have to be seen to regulate, to to have their command of the market, and where and when we're asking, you know, where do they want to take this industry to? I think for a lot of markets, if you were to ask the regulators, they'd say, look. The days of the free market are, are over, which I never thought really existed. But I think they're trying to say, look, we want a market of X amount of licenses being compliant. And 
serving uh, and um, upholding gambling to this set of criteria of standards. And I think that they're looking at it and saying, which companies can we trust to take on board kind of our, the, the, these mandates on this is what the Spanish gambling industry will look like, the French gambling in, or, or France or, or Italy. Um, this might differ depending on the certain country that you're in, um, certain regulator. But once laws have been imposed, can they then be changed afterwards or revised? Well, you know, this this is kind of the point of conflict. I mean, once um, a government agrees, uh, and once they're going to they put in kind of stringent policies, are they up for reviewing this? Now, in the case of Germany, and it's kind of high tax and very restricted policies on casino, it appears that they are we they are a long way off reviewing what they've what has been imposed. However, countering that, if you were to take Italy, now Italy's in the process where they've launched a special committee to revise the um, uh, Italian laws. Uh, they're mostly focusing on technicalities and how to improve kind of market competition and make it better for the consumer, which is good. Now, in Italy, the debate, there is actually a debate on whether uh, they should repeal the blanket ban on um, gambling advertising. The reason why is because it's affected football and it's really had an impact on, on sports media and its revenues. And uh, it could be that that gets presented out to Parliament, that there is a review on how to apply kind of restrictions or how to reframe what was uh, what was put in the first place with the um, with the decree on on gambling advertising so it can happen yeah absolutely it can happen i mean parliament and government and you know elections and so on do exist for a reason policy can be changed there's always different perspectives in there i mean we've seen with sweden as we mentioned earlier that you know reforms were Paused, I believe could be the right word to allow election and elect to take place and let the remit fall on any new administration that get might might get formed. You know, if you look at the UK, they've just passed they've not passed, they've just launched this white paper. We've got an election due next year. That might not be the best example because all the parties did seem to have quite a consensus about the regulation. But I mean it does just go to show that you know, all, all legislation is subject to potential parliamentary or, or legislative changes all the time. And Alpha Ted earlier in the conversation, in the conversation, mentioned about the operators. So bringing them into this, do operators have a voice in regulatory developments? And has there been any um, deliberation for self governance? I, I really think that those days are over, and uh, the idea that a government's going to trust an industry to kind of self-regulate. No, um, I think what's on the agenda is that is one where they want to enhance kind of regulatory powers given to to gambling authorities, and in a sense now it's about how can you bridge that divide between the operator and the regulator and actually laying down clear terms of play for this is what a, gam a specific gambling market needs and it needs to and how it needs to be regulated but also how it needs the operators to to um to comply and to conduct themselves within that market yeah i i, I agree with ted's point i mean i think the policy makers and regulators want to have the carrot and the stick on there's this canary in a coal mine <laughs> there it is <laughs> <laughs> you just need to look at like what of the various regulatory enforcement penalties getting handed out in the uk in recent years you know in the build-up to the white paper as well as some examples in other countries like with the ksa in the netherlands to show that the regulators as ted have said are taking compliance very seriously um in the UK, we've had some consultations between the industry and uh, the government, you know, in the build-up to this white paper. But across Europe, you know, all these all these various national sectors have their own train bodies and all that. But um, yeah, for the most part, it's the regulators and the policymakers want to be in control. The trade bodies can voice their opinions, but the 
yeah, government is as the final say, I think. Perfect. And just to round up this podcast, final question from myself, for both of you. Is, can or should this industry ever expect any form of harmonization on regulation? Go with the alpha first. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, okay, I think we've got to step back and there will always be a fragmented European market. And in, because even at a, in a supreme kind of EU level, they've looked at gambling and said, look, there's a lot, it's, it's not a, um, it's an individually mandated market. So it abides by the laws in place of individual markets, right? So there's always going to be friction between the marketplaces. Now, I think that if you're talking about harmonization, it's what you got to look at the individual elements of gambling within itself and say, look, what can we harmonize between industries? Now, I was actually thinking about this last night, and one of the things that kind of just jumps out is that in every gambling review, the data on gambling for the industry is so limited, especially in terms of addiction problem gambling, gambling prevalence, right? There, it, it, it is across the board. You can't kind of, you can't find any patterns there, right? So if I was to talk to the kind of trade bodies or to advise them anything, I think that's a good starting point is how do you kind of realign data, data between markets, data, and also get the operators to kind of cooperate and create kind of a bigger pool of academic research, academic data to, to help the industry in its biggest kind of points of conflict, which are kind of problem gambling, safer gambling measures, gambling prevalence, right? Um, that would be kind of a good starting point in harmonization. Yeah, I've got to agree with Ted again. Um, so total harmonization is difficult to achieve as Lot, you know, Western European countries in particular have do have a lot in common market-wise, but at the end of the day, there's always going to be differences from country to country. We've seen that in these various regulatory developments over the past couple of years. And, um, yeah, I think the, be the best starting point would be sort of sharing of best practice, sharing of information, sharing of data. That's really the sort of first rung in the ladder towards a harmonized European regulatory environment. If I can just add to that, um, I mean, look, post COVID, it, it's been three years of kind of regulatory rebalance across markets, and this isn't just a UK problem. And I think now that operators, especially trade bodies, they have to start thinking or believing that they can work on kind of bigger picture stuff. Um, I think even in the debates themselves, they've been too kind of focused on what's the regulatory outcome going to be and how can we influence that regulatory outcome. And I think now if if they were just to step back and say, look, this has happened, the decisions have been put in place, but actually what are the kind of generational points of conflict for the industry? And there, I think it's where you can actually start to find a resolution where the industry can have an impact and where the industry can have its say. If it, if it can work um, work more intelligently on these big issues. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And I think it's kind of a good way to round up the podcast because any of these big issues that come further down the line, Alpha, Ted and Beta, Ted, your team will be covering these and listeners can go to sbcnews.co.uk to find all the breaking news when it comes in different European markets, and even global. It would also be wrong of me not to mention the Casino Beat Summit, which is happening next week at the Intercontinental Malta, where there will be a track session dedicated to roundtables on different countries' regulations. So from the top of my head, I believe Sweden, the Netherlands, and it's either Spain or Portugal will be part of the roundtables. Furthermore, you can visit the website to find out more information, which is in the description below. But for now, Alpha Ted, Beta Ted, thank you for joining us. To our listeners, thank you. Goodbye.
Thank you for listening to today's episode of iGaming Daily, brought to you in conjunction with the Casino Beat Summit being held at the Intercontinental Malta on the 23rd to the 25th of May. If you want to find out more about some of the subjects raised today, feel free to explore any of the sites in the SBC News Network or check out the latest edition of the SBC Leaders magazine. Happy reading.